session 70 and we discussed the song of Moses yesterday and we saw in the history we saw the future and we saw in prophecy the fulfillment from the beginning of your Bible in Exodus all the way like a golden thread all the way to the book of Revelation the first song of Moses is to be found in Exodus 15 and I'm going to read for you from verse 1 to verse 19 and please follow with me um, and as we read see how many things you can recognize think about this journey that you have come this last what is it it's, it's almost it's almost a year because we I think we started last year in November or something with the Genesis Bible studies think of everything that you've learned think about all the the words that um, is like keywords and when you think about um, all the teaching and all the information that the Bible gave in each one of these words that we read in the Song of Moses um, it just it, it amazes me how this kingdom, this everlasting kingdom, is so beautifully explained. And then to come and make a, a simple little song that really just summarizes everything that this God of Israel is about and this journey that he has with his people. So I'm going to read out of um, the Restoration Scriptures which has a lot of Hebrew um, words mixed inside. Um, so I will read them in Hebrew and um, translate them in, in English where it is applicable. But a lot of these Hebrew words I'm not translating because by now you already know the meaning. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this shir. A shir shirim is, song of Solom, is, is the song of songs uh, in the book of Solomon. And shir means song. Um, so Israel sang this shir to Yahuwah and spoke, saying, I will sing to Yahuwah, for he has triumphant gloriously. The horse and the rider has he thrown into the sea. Do we know this is exactly what he did with the first exodus? He, uh, Israel was so afraid and they, they thought the Egyptians that is now following them out of Egypt is going to kill them. And yet Yahuwah let them walk on dry land. And then that same Red Sea um, drowned the horse and the rider of the enemy armies. Yah is my strength and my sure. Yah is my strength and my song. And he has become my Yeshua. He has become my salvation. He is my El and I will halal him. I will praise him. Halal Yahuwah. Hallelujah. He is my father's Elohim. I will exalt him. Yahuwah is a man of war. Yahuwah is a man of war. And his name is Yotevafe. We know who this man is. The man of war that is explained to us so beautifully in the book of Ezekiel and Revelation. This Yahshua of our Elohim. Pharaoh's Merkavot. Merkavot is his chariots. Pharaoh's chariots and his army has Yahuwah cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the sea of reeds. We know from history that the enemy is lying at the bottom of the Red Sea. That is the enemy of God. And although the our enemies today might still be alive and well. We know their end will be just like the enemy from the beginning's end at the bottom of the sea or grounded to dust as we saw yesterday. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. That's where they lie and that's where they remain. Our Elohim is our salvation. Verse 6. Your right hand, O Yahuwah, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Yahuwah, has dashed the enemy in pieces. Amen. And in the greatness of your excellency, you have overthrown them that rose up against you. You sent forth your anger, and you consumed them as stubble. 
So whether he drowned them in the ocean or whether through the hand of Joshua, um, the, also the man of war and uh, um, defeating all the enemies in war, defeating the enemies in the Red Sea, defeating the enemies with the edge of his sword, Yeshua, all the enemy of God will be burnt in the wrath of his anger because all the enemy of God is stubble. Um, where we are the wheat, we are the harvest of God. Those that are not the harvest, that are not bearing the fruit of the seed from the tree of life, we will indeed, or those who does not bear that fruit indeed, will all be burnt as stubble. Uh, Where are we now? Verse 8. And with a blast of your nostrils... The Mahim, the water, were gathered together. The floods stood upright as a heap, and the depths became stiff in the heart of the sea. Beautiful. We know that um, Yahuwah sent an east wind throughout the night to open up the Red Sea. And here the Song of Moses says, It was the blast from his nostrils. It was the wind that he blew out of his nostrils. Remember, when he created us, human beings, when he created Adam, he blew the breath of life into Adam's nostrils. So the Ruach HaKodesh, the breath of God, and not even from his mouth. I mean, you can blow hard from your mouth, but not so hard through your nostrils. I mean, God didn't even blow very hard through his nostrils, and yet he opened up the Red Sea. But it's so much deeper than that because it's his ruach, it's his spirit, it's his breath with which he speaks his word that will destroy the enemy. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the plunder. My desire shall be satisfied upon Israel. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Really? Yes, enemy. This is what the enemy said then. This is what the enemy says now. Really? We have a God much bigger than you. Verse 10. You did blow with your wind, and the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Mechamocha, O Yahuwah, among the mighty ones. Who is like you, O Yahuwah, among the gods? Who is like you, beautiful in your set-apartness, in your holiness, awesome in your tehillot, and doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, and the earth swallowed them up, the enemy. You in your rachamim, in your grace and your mercy, have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your Kadosh dwelling, your holy habitation. The people shall hear, oh yes, the people shall hear about what happened, about what you, the Almighty Yahuwah, did. Verse 14, the people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold of the inhabitants of Philistia. Palestine, Philistia. By the time um, Israel came to um, Jericho, remember, and Rahab uh, told the spies, we were extremely afraid of you guys. We have been afraid of you since we've heard everything you have done, your God has done to the Egyptians. And that was 40 years later. Then the rulers of Edom shall be amazed. Yeah, Edom, the um, the seed, the generations of Esau, and uh, later on um, he married Ishmael's daughter, and the the whole enemy of God that is rooted in these nations that are almost our brothers, because both the Canaanites come from um, from Ham, the son of Noah. And we, the Israelites, come from Shem, the son of Noah. And the Edomites and the Ishmaelites and the Palestines come from 
Ishmael through um, through Abraham. We come from Isaac through Abraham. These guys are our brothers, yet they have become our enemies. But not only the physical enemies, but also the spiritual. Through um, Edom and Philistine and the Canaanites, the, the enemy, the serpent enemy has worked all these times, all these years. But the rulers of Edom shall be amazed, and the mighty men of Moab, Moab, remember, was the son of Lot. Trembling shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall just melt away in fear of our God. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of your arm, your right arm. They shall be as still as a stone. <laughs> just like the Egyptians. Where is that? Verse 5. The depths have covered them, and they sank into the bottom of the Red Sea as a stone. Those are the Egyptians. All the other enemies, like, like uh, Moses sings here in his song, uh, fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of your arm, they shall be as still as a stone. Their um, final destination is going to be to lie right next to those drowned um, Egyptians. Where those drowned Egyptians lie like stones at the bottom of the Red Sea, so all the rest of the enemy will be silent as stones because they will be, they will be dead as a stone right next to those Egyptians. Um, verse 16. Um, they shall be still as stone until your people pass over, O Yahuwah, until the people pass over whom you have purchased. Yes, we passed um, out of Egypt because the angel of death passed over us because of the blood. So still today, all these enemies, they will be silent as stones lying at the bottom of the ocean, destroyed by the mighty right hand of Yahuwah. Because we, under the blood, we will pass over and they cannot stop us. The Bible says, don't be afraid of them who can kill the body, but be afraid of him that can kill the body and the soul. We are not afraid of this enemy who might even take out a sword and kill us. Who cares? Because we, we are behind the blood of the Lamb of God, the right hand of, of Yahuwah Almighty himself. And when we pass over from this earthly body into the eternal body, they are all going to be dead, silent as stones. There's nothing they can do to the people of God until the people of God has passed over. They will be quiet. You shall bring them in, your people Israel, and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. God's inheritance is his beautiful holy land and his beautiful holy city, Jerusalem, and his beautiful holy bride that he calls Jerusalem. And it's, in, it's his inheritance because he died. He was married to this holy bride and, and this holy people. But we transgress the marriage agreement, the covenant. And so he divorced the ten northern tribes. We've, de we've dealt with this history so many times. And therefore he could not marry her again unless he died. And unless the husband dies, you know, that woman can't be married to that same husband again. But the husband rose from the dead and the covenant could be renewed. And this time he writes his law on our hearts in the renewed covenant. And as with the first exodus, he brought them into the holy land and he gave them the enemies to be under their feet. But Israel, in the first exodus, we allowed the enemies, gods, to seduce us and we didn't destroy the enemy as he commanded us. But we started worshipping the enemy's gods together with him. And at the end of the day, that has caused the fall of this beautiful holy nation of God. But now the Song of Moses is teaching us that through the hand, the right hand of God, 
that writes his Torah on our hearts and the blood of the Lamb that gives us forgiveness for all our foolishness over the last how many thousands of years. How he will again bring us out of Egypt through the Red Sea, through the wilderness and the enemies, God's enemies and our enemies will be will be silent as stones. They'll be so afraid because Yahuwah himself will bring us in, um, verse 17, and plant them in the mountain of his inheritance, in the place of Yahuwah, which you have made, listen to this, for yourself to dwell in. And now you have to remember the book of Revelation that says, And I, John, saw the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven like a bride adorned for her husband. And now the God of Israel will live with his people forever and ever. Because the new Jerusalem, the bride, the holy bride that is made new through repentance and the blood and the washing of the baptism of the mikvah and the washing of the word we are made brand new like a holy city and he's going to come down out of heaven and he's going to gather us from all the corners of the world um, to him where he is going to be in jerusalem that is his holy mountain he's going to stand on the holy mountain and and all those who didn't receive the mark of the beast will stand with him and we will sing the song of Moses and we will have the name of Yahuwah written on our foreheads. Remember Ezekiel, I can't remember, I think 16, that said all the people that cry and sigh for all the sins and abomination in the streets of Jerusalem. They are marked by the man with the scroll and the ink pot in his hand and the pen and he marks all those that sigh and cry about all the sins of Jerusalem, that spend time on their knees for the city Jerusalem, for the bride, for the people of God to return to him because of their sins. Those people are marked with this man, with the ink pot and the pen, and they are marked with the name of Yahuwah on their foreheads. Because you will bring them in, you will plant them in your mountain, in your place, your place, Israel, Jerusalem, which you have made for yourself to dwell in. You are going to dwell there with us. You wanted to do this in the, that in the first exodus, yet we broke your covenant and you couldn't stay with us because you are holy. And we had to be holy because you are holy. And if we didn't live holy, you warned us that you will have to reject us and and let us be punished and exiled but now we learn to live holy and now you make us holy through the spirit and through the word and through the washing and through the sword and through the circumcision and through the cutting of our hearts you teach us to be holy so that in the second exodus we can try again to live with you in your holy kadosh dwelling forever O oh, yahuwah you have made this place for yourself to dwell in, in the Kadosh place, O Yahuwah, that your hands have established. This is the Kadosh place of Yahuwah that his hands have established. We are returning back to the Garden of Eden in Jerusalem. God is going to come down out of heaven to Jerusalem. The thousand year reign of Yeshua will be in Jerusalem. This is where we are on our way back to learning everything from the first exodus. Verse 18. Yahuwah shall reign le olam va'et forever and ever. And I just want to sing for you. Listen to the words of the Shema again. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivot Malchutam Leolam Vaed Listen now Israel Yahua Eloheinu Yahua Echad He is one Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Because Exodus 15 verse 18, short little verse, but powerful. Yahuwah shall reign 
forever, le olam va'it. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with his merkavot, his chariots, and with the horsemen they went into the sea, and Jehovah brought again the water of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Beautiful. Verse 1 to verse 19. The song of Moses. The first song of Moses. The first time Yahuwah brought Israel out of Egypt. The first time he, he tried to teach his wife to follow his ways. And teaching her to follow his laws. So that he can bring them all the way into the beautiful holy city. And we agreed so many times that we learn from the first Exodus. Because I just want to read to you Jeremiah 16. And this is your God speaking. Your God says, listen to this. Therefore, see the days come, says Yahuwah, that it shall no longer be said, Yahuwah lives, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Mitzrayim. No, that shall no longer be said, but the days will come that they will say, Yahuwah lives, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them. And I, Yahuwah, will bring them again into the land Israel that I gave to Abram, Isaac and Jacob. See, I will send for many fishers, says Yahuwah, and they shall fish them. So we are the fish that, you remember, Yahshua sent out his disciples and they caught the 153 fish, exact number, because those are the numbers of the Hebrew verse, Benai Ha Elohim, the sons of the living God, that was called no longer the sons of God, but in the last days they will be called again sons of God in the book of Hosea. And that Gematria is 153. And Yeshua sent out his disciples to catch 153 fish. Because God prophesies in Jeremiah that yes, I tried to bring my bride out of Egypt into the promised land the first time, but she broke my covenant. But that will be forgotten because the second exodus will be so amazing. They will no longer say, remember how Yahuwah brought out um, Israel out of Egypt. No, they will say, Yahuwah lives who brought up Israel out of the northern countries and out of all the lands where he has scattered them. He will send fishers to fish them. Everybody that spreads the gospel, the Bezora, the true living word of God and the uh, salvation through the Son Yeshua and a, an obedient holy lifestyle to the God of Israel. Those are fishers of men. Yahweh said to his disciples, I'll make you fishers of men. Every one of us that is teaching our neighbor to come back to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We are fishers. And if you are not fishing yet, you are being fished. You are being taught the word of God. God is prophesying about you that he will send fishers to fish you. And he will bring you up in the second exodus out of the northern countries and all the lands where he has scattered you. We will even forget about the first exodus because the second exodus will be so huge and so amazing. People of Israel lost sheep of Israel out of every tribe, nation and tongue from every corner of this world. But if we don't listen to the fishers, if we don't allow the disciples who are fishers of men to fish us for the kingdom of God, God prophesies in Jeremiah 16 verse 16, After I have sent fishers, I will send many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and the hunters will hunt them from every hill and out of the holes of rocks they will be hunted for my eyes are upon all their derachot 
their derech, the ways. They are not hidden from my face, neither is their iniquity hidden from my eyes. And first, I will repay their iniquities and their sin. I will repay it double, because they have defiled my land, my holy land. They have filled my inheritance, my holy inheritance, my country, my land, my city. They have filled it with the corpses of their detestable and abominable things. Yes, detestable and abominable and kosher and Torah-like things have been thrown into the holy kingdom of God, being preached to the world that his kingdom can be polluted by breaking the Torah as long as there's cheap grace available. He says, no, I'll repay that double. I'm going to fish my people Israel from all over the world and I'm going to bring them back. To my holy land. And I'm going to take all your detestable things, O my enemy, out of my holy land and out of my holy people. And I will bring them out of Egypt. And I will teach them to take Egypt out of them. Leave Egypt behind and, and cut a new, a renewed covenant with me, with all their heart and all their mind. This is what the Song of Moses is about. As God himself says in Jeremiah, we will actually forget the first exodus because the second time that I bring my people to my holy land will be so amazing. And we might, I don't know, sit around the fire one day in the new Jerusalem or during the millennium reign. We might sit with all these guys, Joshua and Caleb and Moses and all the people, all the Israelites that came out of Egypt and we will ask them, oh, how was the first exodus? Oh, tell us about the Red Sea, blah, blah, blah. And they will say, no, no, you tell us. How was the second exodus? No, you tell us. How was it to come out of every nation, tribe and tongue? How was it to not even have seen the ten plagues with your own eyes like we did and yet believed? And the people of Israel that rebelled against God. But that was saved because they did believe in him and they did repent. And they went through Yom Kippur year after year. And some of them, especially Joshua and Caleb and all those guys and Phineas and Moses, and Miriam and Aaron. They're going to ask us to tell them how was the second exodus. How amazing for them to see people from every tribe, nation and tongue, Gentiles, that chose the God of Abraham and that left all their religions behind and left all their comforts behind and followed Moses through the wilderness spiritually, reading the Song of Moses and the Torah of Moses, letting Moses teach us, although we didn't even ever meet Moses. And, and they will ask us to tell them, how did your faith remain for such a long time so that you could endure all the way through the wilderness? Let us learn the song of Moses. Let us sing the song of Moses. And let us look forward to the promised land. <laughs>